Now, the first criminal trial of a former U.S. president is set to go ahead next month. A New York judge has rejected a bid from Donald Trump to have the case dismissed. The charges stem from hush money paid to two women before the 2016 presidential election. And the trial is now scheduled to begin on March 25th. Now, after the hearing, Trump said the case was interfering with his presidential campaign. So instead of being in South Carolina and other states campaigning, I'm stuck here. It's an election interference case. Uh, nobody's ever seen anything like it in this country. It's a disgrace. It's a disgraceful situation, actually. And we'll just have to figure it out. And we're joined now by John Culhane, a professor of law at the Widener University Delaware Law School. Welcome to DW. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, now, giving hush money is not illegal in the US, is it? But the former president is accused of falsifying his business records by saying that this payment was for legal fees. So can you explain to us what the legal implications are if he's found guilty of this? Of course. So falsifying business records in New York is, in most cases, just a misdemeanor. But the the allegation here is that this amounts to a felony because if you falsify business records in connection with another crime, then it rises to the level of a felony. And the argument appears to be, although it's not 100 percent spelled out in the indictment, but the argument appears to be that the other crime was interfering with the election. And the way that works is uh, some of the evidence here, Michael uh, involves Michael Cohen, his former fixer, Trump's former fixer, who apparently uh, was told to delay paying the hush money until after the election. So there's some evidence that uh, this hush money payment was not only a falsified business record, but was done in, in the hopes of affecting the election and therefore would be illegal interference with the election. And that's a much more serious crime. OK, we heard that soundbite from Trump there saying that he's pretty annoyed that all of this is inter interfering with his uh, his campaigning. Does Trump have any other legal means to delay or, or get this case dismissed? Not that I can see. So he cannot appeal the uh, dismiss the the uh, refusal of the judge to throw the case out at this point. He has to wait until after the trial. So you know, while anything could happen, uh, and I suppose, but uh, it's very unlikely that the jury selection process will not begin on schedule. And it looks right now as if the first of these of these criminal trials is going to go forward on March 25th. The uh, motion to dismiss was based on selective uh, the argument of selective prosecution and a second argument that they had this evidence and they kind of sat on it. Those are not likely to win on appeal, but more importantly, these cannot be appealed until after the jury reaches a verdict and assuming that verdict is a conviction, that's when the appeal would be appropriate. So there's no appeal right now that could be that could be lodged. OK, now this is, of course, uh, one of four criminal cases that Trump is facing. Um, what do we know about the evidence? I mean, is there some kind of smoking gun in, in any of these cases? Yeah, well, it, you know, the cases are all obviously quite uh, different. The, the alleged smoking gun here is, as I said, uh, if Michael Cohen was told to, you know, delay or put off paying the hush money until after the election, that would seem like a pretty clear case of election interference. And so that would be kind of the smoking gun in that case. Mm -hmm. The other cases, uh, you know, aren't as uh, far along. And there are attempts, some of which will be more successful, I think, to, you know, to delay these claims until after the, you know, the 2024 election. Uh, and we'll have to see how those go. My guess is that the uh, the Washington case based on interference with the uh, uh, election because of the events of January 6th. My guess is that that case will go forward before the election. The other two cases, uh, harder to say. OK, looking ahead, if Trump were to be found guilty before the next election, explain to us what that would mean for his presidential campaign. 
Yeah. So it's interesting. There's nothing in the U.S. Constitution, surprisingly, that uh, disqualifies uh, a person from holding office, even if they're convicted of a crime. Uh, it's it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it. But uh, certainly there's enough, you know, enough evidence and polling data to suggest that if he were convicted, he would stand almost no chance of election. But in theory, he could be elected and he could serve as president even if he's in prison. And of course, if that were the case, it would be up to the, the Congress to impeach him. That would be the only way to get him out of office. John Culhane, Professor of Law at the Widener University Delaware Law School. Thank you so much for your analysis there. Thank you for having me. For more on this, I'm joined now by Richard Painter. He was the chief White House ethics lawyer during the George W. Bush presidency and is currently a law professor at the University of Minnesota. Welcome to DW. Now, this is a, a criminal case. What does that mean for the defendant, the uh, former president, Donald Trump? Well, this uh, case uh, will proceed to trial in late March. Uh, the judge decided that today. Uh, this case has nothing to do with Joe Biden, uh, the Biden administration. This is a, a Manhattan County prosecutor prosecuting a case uh, concerning hush money that was paid uh, and concealed in 2016. Uh, and this is part of a, a case that was pursued by the federal government, by the Justice Department. While Donald Trump was president, his own lawyer, Michael Cohen, was sent to jail in connection with these hush money payments by the United States Department of Justice. Once again, while he was president, he was not indicted because DOJ, the Justice Department, will not indict a sitting president. But here, the county attorney in Manhattan has said that it is also a felony under New York law to falsify business records to cover up any type of crime. And that includes concealing the spending of around $130,000 to uh, uh, pay Stormy Daniels to keep her mouth shut. And that money was funneled through Donald Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, who went to jail for this. And uh, this was a felony under New York law if Donald Trump was involved in orchestrating that payment and falsifying those business records, then he would be convicted. He is to be presumed innocent until he is convicted. Uh, but that's where this case stands at this point. And it has absolutely nothing to do with Joe Biden. This is not a political prosecution. This is a county, a New York, Manhattan prosecution for falsified business records under New York law. Mm -hmm. Experts are describing the prosecutor's case as being on a, a largely untested legal basis. So given everything you've said, how, how strong is this case? Well, the, uh, the point of the New York statute is that New York uh, businesses should not be used uh, to uh, funnel money uh, for purpose of violating uh, law anywhere, whether it's in the United Kingdom or in Germany or in another state or under federal law. We can't have New York businesses falsifying their financial records in order to cover up crimes committed elsewhere. New York is not a money laundering man. And this is very, very important to the integrity of the business community in New York. Uh, where I practiced law before I became a law professor, uh, we can't have New York businesses being used this way. So if there was falsification of business records to conceal the $130,000 payoff to Storby Daniels, that is a very serious crime. Now, who committed that crime and whether Donald Trump was involved in that crime, that's what's going to be determined at trial. But this is not a specious legal theory. Uh, or, or some obscure statute. Mm -hmm. uh, New York, once again, does not want its business records in New York businesses being falsified to conceal crimes anywhere. Will Trump be able to find any way to avoid having to appear, uh, to appear in court? Oh, I'm sure he'll look for a way. He, he has three other uh, pending cases, uh, two federal charges, one for the classified documents, another for the attempt to overturn the election, a Georgia case, uh, which is somewhat chaotic right now, uh, uh, that situation. But the New York prosecutors decided, the New York judge decided that this New York case is going to go first, uh, given some of the delays in the other cases. Uh -huh. Of course, he'll look for a delay. He would like to delay all of these cases until after the election, uh, get himself elected president, then uh, use his power in the presidency to have all the charges dismissed. But it, it may or may not work out that way. So would you be expecting a verdict before the election in November or not? Oh, yes. If this case goes to trial in late March, there would almost certainly be a verdict in uh, mm -hmm. sometime in April. 
And, and uh, if he were to be found guilty, would, how would the appeal process work? I mean, could he even end up in jail? Well, uh, this is a serious offense, and if he were convicted of the felony of falsifying business records, there's a possibility of incarceration or uh, probation. We don't know what the penalty would be, depending on how many counts uh, he were convicted on. But that's why we aren't there yet. Uh, he's presumed innocent until he is found guilty. But if he were convicted, uh, this would be a complication uh, for his becoming the next president of the United States, even though we would not automatically disqualify someone from the presidency for a criminal conviction for anything other than insurrection or sedition. Mm -hmm. As we don't know what's going to happen, but but all of this that's happening, you know, this case, the other civil cases that Trump is facing, do you expect them to seriously affect his bid to win the White House for a second time? Well, I was hoping that the Republican Party would look at some of their other very strong candidates. We still have Nikki Haley in the race, the former governor of South Carolina, uh, who is uh, every bit as conservative as Donald Trump, more consistently conservative than Donald Trump. Uh, and who doesn't have any criminal indictments ha hanging over her head. So uh, maybe the Republican Party uh, has second thoughts. Uh, if not, uh, we go into the, uh, the election in November, uh, and the American people have to decide who, who they want to be in charge of the country, uh, the presidency, for the next four years. Richard Painter from the University of Minnesota. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Well, thank you for having me.